Hello. When I was on the lake today, I got to thinking about an inflatable raft. I had one for many a year. And I just want to give you a heads up about one of these things. Uh, some things you need to think about. Especially if you plan on paddling that thing by yourself. Rule number one in my book is have a partner. And if you don't have a partner to help equalize the, uh, the paddling, if you're going to be on a big pond, then you need to learn how to scull a boat. Sculling is pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of practice. I've been doing it since I was a teenager. I sculled all through the Okie Swamp when I was a kid. Uh, it doesn't take that much energy. It just looks hard to do, but once you, you get the technique down and you're not fighting the water, you'll be able to hold a paddle close to the blade, uh, brace the, the handle of the paddle against your forearm, and just use your upper, upper body strength to make some very smooth motions. I don't know how to describe it. You'll just have to do it. Maybe there will be some videos on YouTube, or I'm sure you can go on Google and find out how to scull a boat. For me, it was trial and error. I had nobody teaching me about water when I was a child. Nobody teaching me about fishing. And I guess that uh, uneducation shows on most of my fishing videos. I'm not that great of a fisherman. But let me tell you this, and I'm not joking. I bought a inflatable raft thinking it would be my access to some public waters that did not allow uh, motorized vessels. At the time, I owned a bass boat and had access to an even bigger bass boat. But I wasn't allowed to take it on some of these uh, city ponds. When I say city pond, I mean we're talking about pretty large bodies of water most most of the time. Lake Jordan has sections buoyed off just for non-motorized vessels. Same thing with Falls Lake. And most of the towns within 50 mile radius of where I live are the same way. Great fishing and an inflatable raft is a great way to fish. It's very economical, but trust me when I tell you this, practice on a small pond. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about when you take that boat out for the first time. You're going to stick that paddle in the water and think just because you're pulling that paddle in a certain way, that raft is going to respond in the way you hope wrong. It's a whole different ball game in an inflatable raft. You have, it's all motion and no inertia. Most boats have some inertia that's very forgiving for how you paddle, not a, not a raft. So I'm going to make this quick video. It's, it's an outtake on a fishing video I made today, and I hope you take it to heart. I'm not trying to scare you off from buying a raft. I'm just trying to save you a lot of heartbreak. Hope you enjoy your raft. I've enjoyed mine. I still use it once in a while. Maybe in the near future. Well, I'm lying. I was going to say I'll make a video of me out in my raft, but Lord knows I'm in my 70s, and I think my rafting days are over. Unless I go whitewater rafting, there's no way I'm, I'm physically capable of getting in a raft and and paddling three, four, five miles a day. But if you're young, go for it. Just be careful. Practice on a small body of water until you learn the technique and everything's going to be fine. Thanks for watching. Earlier I mentioned something about my inflatable raft. How I used to come down that old road on the other side of the lake. That got me to thinking, you know, we got warm weather just around the corner. 
if you're considering buying an inflatable raft, I got mine at Kmart. I think it was like a six or an eight person raft. It was pretty big. It was as big as this boat. Uh, I would say buy one of those things at the end of the season. Shoot, it's been a long time since I bought mine, but it, back in those days, it was probably $45, $50 for the raft. I paid $25 for mine. It was a closeout item at the end of the season. Secondly, I don't care how good you are at paddling a canoe, it's a whole different ball game when you get in that inflatable raft. Odds are, if you're not skilled, you're going to just go in circles. I don't mean like big circles, I mean like you'll just spin around. If you try and just swap sides with the paddle, you'll just zigzag in place. So what I had to do was learn how to just sit up in the bow of that, that raft, reach over the, the side, and skull. You can Google skull in a boat and learn how to do that. It gives your arm a good workout and you can fish with the other hand. Uh, also, if you come out here to a place like Beaver Dam, the wind and the current does crazy things on this lake when it's blowing north or south, especially around points, specifically that one that I'm pointing to right there, and one right down there. There's a surprising amount of current that can, that can generate right in those kind of places. There may not be any current out here on the pond, but when you get around those points, especially if there's a pretty big bay on the other side of the point, there could be a lot of water coming through there when the wind's right. So, good idea to take an anchor. I've got mine. There's been at least four or five times I've been out here, and I had to just drop anchor. I was losing ground trying to get back in my car and just sit it out for 15 or 20 minutes, and then usually you'll get a break and you can continue to, to march on up. day of fishing out here I would have to pull up to the shore and and just tighten it up a couple of times you know maybe 20 or 30 pumps and uh, get the raft tight again so it wasn't so sloppy slowly and if there is a approaching storm and you want to get on the beach uh, to seek shelter make sure you pull that raft up to the shelter with you I was down at the the swimming area on this pond here at Beaver Dam when it started lightning and blowing. So I just beached over there at the swimming area. It was too early for swimmers that year. But the next thing I know, my raft had flipped over, head over in. Had a styrofoam cooler full of fish. They were got scattered all over the beach. My tackle got thrown into the lake. And uh, I ended up having to drive all the way around this lake to the other side to find my raft. <laughs> Some tips for you if you're going to be out here in an inflatable. Now, I, like I said, it was a $25 raft. And maybe one of those big things like the Coast Guard uses might be different. But if you're buying a cheap, cheap uh, raft at Walmart or Kmart or someplace like that, be prepared. Enough said. Okay, here's the takeaway from this whole thing about an inflatable raft. Maybe I should call it an inflatable boat. If you're going to use it as a boat, and if you're planning on fishing out of it, or just enjoying yourself in it by yourself, after you learn how to scull the thing, step two, phase two, will be to go ahead and modify that thing to where it's going to be very pleasant. I love my raft, but I don't like, I don't love paddling it. I don't love sculling it. Go ahead and put your little floor in there. 
You, it doesn't have to be accurate. Just, you know, once you inflate your raft, you'll see that the, uh, uh, there's, there's lots of, um, there's enough difference between the diameter between the walls of, the, of an inflated raft and the actual flooring that you could put a piece of plywood, not thick plywood, not unless you're pretty muscular, get you some quarter inch plywood, just something a little rigid, and make you a floor. What I did with my first raft was I went ahead and covered it with outdoor carpet, you know, that green stuff, that turf type carpet. Uh, you can get it at any big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot, you know, sort of like AstroTurf. Not only does that make it look better, but it's it gives you some rigidity to the raft. Secondly, put a seat in the thing. Now, it's going to cost you $35, $40, $50. I don't know what a seat costs these days. You can go on, you know, you can go on the computer and, and check it out. I think I bought mine at Walmart uh, years ago. I think I got two seats for $25 or something like that. Pedestal seats. I'm not talking about the kind of seat where you've got to be, you know, down at floor level. You, you need to be raised up enough off your floor so if you have to paddle, you're not reaching up and over. You want to be able to just reach out and down. Uh, next, I would suggest investing in a trolling motor. It doesn't have to be anything very powerful. The first trolling motor I put on my raft, and I was in a pond less than an acre, I tested it out and I did a wheelie. I stood the front end of that raft straight up in the air. After that, I went to my shed and I found an old trolling motor, J.C. Higgins or whatever. It was an old Sears trolling motor, probably 10, 15 pounds max. And uh, I had a customer at the time I was doing service work. I had a customer who was remodeling his bathroom. And I took the aluminum uh, rods that, you know, he was using for his shower. He was throwing those away, and I, you know, without welding or anything else, just basically with a hacksaw and some screws and a drill, I was able to make me a little bracket. Um, I won't tell you how I made my bracket, because you can probably make one better, but a bracket for an electric trolling motor. And put that thing on there. And trust me, you're going to have a lot of fun with that. And you will fly across the lake. It doesn't have to be a very powerful trolling motor. Um, later on, as I got a little more experience with it, I did boost up my uh, my foot pounds. Of, like I went from a 10 to probably a 20, 30. I would not go more than 30. I've got a 40 on my my little. Uh, boat I use now, but there's no way I'd put that on my raft. It would just, it would be too much. So, very cheap. You can get a raft for less than $100 anywhere at today's prices. Buy you a little trolling motor for about $100, $125. And with a few modifications, you know, a piece of plywood, 4x4, four four, probably be enough. It doesn't have to doesn't have to cover the entire floor, just enough to uh, uh, to mount your seat on. Uh, you know, for, for just a few hundred dollars, you're going to have something that will allow you to do what I did for over 10 years, which is go out to ponds and catch a heck of a lot of fish. So I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to warn you that don't go out unprepared, okay? Thanks for watching this. Good luck.